This is the all sufficiency of Christ in the gospel of grace to restore ruined sinners to himself for their joy in his glory. Check it out now. I'm asked from up here, hey, where have you been the last five years? I say buried in sin. I thought I was righteous, but that's a mirage. So God snatched off my mask and facade, exposing the truth. When you, the Holy One, showed me what you see, I was loathing this loop scene, but it was only so you could show me your beauty. The beauty of your deep compassion for needy cats who are steeped in mad sin. But because of Jesus bleeding, gasping, now before God, my sin's completely absent. Because on the cross, it was like my hell. So now my righteousness is Christ himself. Because of the blood spill, your mountain of grace done smothered my tongue mill. So what did God use to restore me? Why it was the truth of him glory Shining in the sun of God and the fierce oh. Most clearly seen in the gospel of grace oh So what did God do to restore me? Why it was the truth of him glory Shining in the sun of God and the fierce oh. Most clearly seen in the gospel of grace oh So you convinced that you're ruined And the proof is the bad fruit of the sin that you're brewing Sick of the emptiness you're pursuing So what can fix the brokenness of a human? My help is not in 12 steps Open books on the shelf that sells best Like health and wealth mess that compels self's flesh Cause with self-help, guess what, you help less Cause in self is in dwelt death So it's not an attempt to keep self well kept Only Jesus Christ himself can save us from ourselves in hell's depths So what's the remedy for your sinning? Is it in performance-driven moralism? No, nope. it's only falling on the Lord who's risen Whose infinite grace is of course sufficient to be reborn, forgiven, and atoned with wisdom, and free from your more than born or prison, and equipped for his mission, me beholding his glory can transform a Christian. So what did God use to restore me? Why it was the truth of him glory, shining in the sun of God and the fierce, oh, most filling sin and the gospel of grace. So what did God use to restore me? Why it was the truth of him glory, shining in the sun of God and the fierce, oh, most filling sin and the gospel of grace. So name your need, he knows your strength is weak, the unchanging grace of the Savior's deep. In Christ Jesus, every saint's complete. So come by faith to our faithful priest. What is faith? It's just an empty hand that receives the grace of the precious lamb. Namely, God the Son crushed as a payment. His perfect life is our justification. So the gospel's not just for unbelievers. Every day we should trust and run to Jesus. Confess and plead with wretched seed. But his works for all deaths perfected me. So when you come to the sun, behold this, the riches of God in abundant fullness. When you come to his blood, your soul gets peace with God, abundant love and wholeness. I'm now making the argument, the most foregone sinner who's dark and grim, can be restored by Christ who pardoned him. Cause Christ's abounding grace is larger than your heart of sin that's hard within. For all who his irresistible grace is targeted. The gospel of Christ is the power of God of salvation from start to end. All right, here we are. This is Jonathan with the Hope Movement. This is Theology Famine Relief, session 33. This is 33 weeks um, of doing theology. And um, in Spanish, we're at like 44 weeks. So we're doing our thing for the glory of God. Uh, shout out to Timothy Brindle. That was the intro. The all the all sufficient uh, of Christ, sufficiency of Christ. Um, he's got a new album out, so you can go ahead and check that out. He's uh, it's a great theological uh, hip hop album. Um, so we have been we've we've gone through a lot of things in in these sessions. We've talked about um, the attributes of God. We've talked about the sufficiency of Scripture. Um, total depravity. Um, we've talked about the Trinity, um, the incarnation. So we talked about a lot of things on our videos. Um, we've been, now we're getting into some more in depth things. So we've been doing this, um, now at the last week of every month. Um, but we're going to be doing some things, uh, pretty soon. We're be doing this a little bit more, more often, um, where we're going to be doing, uh, uh, talking about kind of condensing this into more like 15, 20 minute videos um, and talking about theological um, topics, things that might answer your questions. 
Um, I know there was a lot of questions I had, um, unfortunately, that I wasn't taught um, growing up or wasn't taught properly. Um, so this time we've been talking about um, Christ fulfilling the scriptures, finding Christ throughout all the scriptures. Um, and so we talked about that. We had a great breakdown of that um, a couple of sessions ago. So feel free to check that out. I think it was uh, session 32. Um, but we uh, last the last time we met session, um, excuse me, 31 was the last one. 32, we talked about um, Christ's fulfillment of the Old Testament um, prophecies, um, but talking more about his his birth and um, his uh, his uh, lineage, lineage as well. Um, so today we're going to be talking about um, prophecies concerning Jesus's ministry. So what we're doing with this is kind of interesting. We're going to be looking at Old Testament scripture that was prophetic, talking about the ministry of Christ, and then looking at New Testament scripture, seeing how he fulfilled that. So the point of this is so that you will see Christ throughout all the scriptures, um, see how he fulfilled the scriptures. So we know that he fulfilled the law that we weren't able to fulfill. He, and, and there's terms that you'll find in theology um, is the first thing to understand that the Bible is historical and redemptive. So it's, it's a historical book. Yeah, see, so these, are, these are people that are real people, um, and they had real situations. They face real circumstances. Um, but also there's, there's typology. There's shadows of things. It talks about in Hebrews. Um, there's, so there's uh, things that we see, like the staff of, of Moses that, that are types. Um, and so we, we have these kind of things that, that we want to look at, um, look at the Bible in, in, in its proper context. And so uh, we'll get into type out another, another session, but it's really interesting when you see how um, things in the Old Testament um, and the Old Testament, the New Testament was concealed in the Old Testament, the Old Testament revealed in the New Testament, as Augustine said. Um, and then you go and you see also um, some really interesting things. Um, with typology, um, a great example of that is Paul references Jesus as the second Adam. So you had Adam that was, um, be, who was, his direct father was, was God. He didn't have an earthly father um, in a certain aspect to say. Um, and he, he wasn't able to fulfill the law. He wasn't able to, uh, he, was, he, he, he failed. Um, and Jesus came as the second Adam, um, begotten by the father, and um, was able to live the life that Adam wasn't able to live, what you and I couldn't live, um, and was able to um, uh, be our substitute. And so this is a, something that's very beautiful when you see the scripture coming into its full context. Um, so just getting into this um, without any further ado, uh, we got a lot of verses to go through. So I don't, I'll, we'll, we'll get through these. There's a lot of stuff we'll be talking about in shorter videos in the future. Um, so... We're going to be talking today about prophecies concerning um, Jesus and, and Jesus, Jesus's ministry. So, the way of the Lord is prepared. So that's um, that is something that we uh, have heard before. So foretold in Isaiah forty three through four, a voice is calling: Clear the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make smooth in the desert a highway for our God. Let every valley be lifted up. Every mountain hill be made low and let the rough ground become plain, a plain and rugged terrain, a broad valley. This was fulfilled in Luke 3, uh, two, and th 2 through 5, where it says, In the high priesthood of Ananias and Sapphira, um, the word of the Lord, word, word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. And he came into all the district around the Jordan, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet. And then he goes on to say, the voice of, of the one crying in the wilderness. This is the beauty of the scripture um, that you see that it's, it's also confirming it right there. It's repeating and it's saying, the word of the Lord came um, to, to Ananias and Caiaphas, and, uh, and then it goes in right there, it says clearly, as the words of Isaiah the prophet said. Um, so we see scripture being pointed to the way of the Lord is being prepared. The messenger before the Lord foretold in Malachi 3.1, Behold, I am going to send my messenger, and he will 
uh, be clear. He will, he will clear the way before me. And the Lord uh, whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. And this is fulfilled in Luke seven twenty four through 27, when it says, When the messengers of John had left, he began to speak to the crowds about John. What did, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Those uh, who are splendidly uh, clothed and live in luxury are found in royal palaces. But what did you go out and to see? A prophet. Yes, and I say to you, and one uh, is more than a prophet. This is the one whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. This is Jesus talking about that prophecy and found in, in John as clearing the way for him. Um, declared the Son of God. This is foretold in, in Psalms 2, 7. I will surely tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. And fulfilled in Matthew 3, 13 through 17, then Jesus arrived from Galilee, Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John to be pap- baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, I have need to baptize you. And, um, and do you come to see me? But Jesus answered, said to him, permit, per, permit it at this time, for it is the way, for in, for in this way, it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. So here he is, fulfilling the scriptures. And then he permitted him. And after he was baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens opened. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and, lighten, and lightning on him. Lighting on him, excuse me. And, and behold, a voice of the heavens said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Ministry of, of Jesus in Galilee. Uh, this is foretold in Isaiah 9. One through two, and there will be no more gloom for her uh, who was in anguish. In earlier times, he treated the land of Ze- Zebulun, um, Zebulun, excuse me, and the land of uh, Zaphtani. <laughs> I'm saying these wrong, I know, with contempt. But later on, uh, later on, he said it. Um, he said, "Make it glorious by the way of the sea." Uh, on the other side of Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, um, the people who walk in darkness will see the light, and, and those who uh, live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. This was fulfilled in Matthew um, 4, 12 through 16. Now, we, now when Jesus heard that John had been taken into custody, he withdrew into Galilee, leaving Nazareth, and he came and settled in Capernaum. Um, it talks about the same regions that that we just spoke about. This is to fulfill what this this what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet, and uh, and so it, it repeats what was we just read in Isaiah nine. So you're seeing this picture being painted now of the scriptures pointing towards Christ. And I think I, growing up, I I don't think I ever realized, or definitely was not taught, that these were things referencing um, uh, Christ, except for, I think, in one that maybe people might have taught me as a kid was Isaiah 53. And of course, that it was always taken out of context in, context in my church um, because they focused on, by your stripes you were healed. Um, and they used it as a way of saying that this was in reference to physical healing in connection with the atonement. Obviously, he, it's in the context, it's talking about you're healed from your sins, your iniquities. Um, so th- it's really beautiful to see um, Christ through the whole scripture. These are not uh, two separate books. They are really united with one another. It's one book, um, and it's uh, all pointing towards Christ. Um, Jesus cares for and heals the needy. This is foretold in Isaiah uh, 35, uh, 4 through 17. Um, and in many ver- verses, as well as Psalm 72, 13. Um, and then it's fulfilled in uh, Matthew um, 9, 30. Um, so we're seeing, we're seeing all these types of um, scriptures come pointing, pointing towards uh, Christ. So what I'm going to do right now, I need to pull up something real quick.
Hang on one second because I needed to get this other part, the, the verses. I'll tell you what. Hang on one second. I'm sorry. Let me get this together. Good old technology. So um, there's a, the, 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 what's foretold about um, Christ being our priest after Melchizedek. Um, this is found in um, Psalms. And we find it in um, Psalms 110, 1 and 4. And I'm trying to get my screen to work right because we were translating um, documents, uh, the gospel uh, documents into uh, Swahili. And of course, my screen changed. <laughs> um, my translation changed to Swahili. So I'm, I apologize for for that. Just give me one second. Okay. So the priest after Melchizedek, um, uh, Psalms 110.1, The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool. And then verse 4 goes on to say, um, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind for a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Um, Hebrews is a beautiful book. Um, I just, I really love Hebrews. It's, it's, it's one of those books that obviously is talking about Christ as our, our priest, our high priest, but it really does give you a great summary of even the Old Testament. And there it says, so, also, Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, you are my son today, I have begotten you, as he says, um, also in other places, you, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Um, this is, um, uh, just, just take some time to read um, a Hebrews. Um, and uh, we're going to look at also rejected and not believed um, uh, by the Jews. And I just referenced um, uh, 53, chapter 53. We're going to look at um, 1 through 4. And it says, Who has believed what has, has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of a dry ground. He had no form or majesty um, that, that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as for the one whom men hide, hid their, hide their faces, he was despised and, and we esteemed him not. Uh, surely he has been born, he's borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Um, this is a description, a, a profound description of, of our Savior. And, um, and so we see this also fulfilled in um, John 1 11 it says he came to his own and his pe his own people did not receive him um, we also see where um, a point in Isaiah um, where he was um, the deaf blind are healed and um, this is found in Isaiah 29 um, excuse me, 29 18 through 19 and um, in that day the deaf shall hear the words of the words of the, of a book and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see and the meek shall obtain flesh fresh joy in in the lord and the poor among man, mankind will exalt the holy one of israel um, we see this fulfilled um several places but in particular particularly in um in matthew um we're going to look at matthew eleven five. And that is the blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised, and the poor have good news preached to them. You can also find that in Mark 7, 37. Um, appointed, Jesus appointed preach, to preach um, liberty. Um, you see this is a lot of um, prophecies in Isaiah. Um, Isaiah is a pretty hard book to, to read and understand at times, but when you start looking at it in through its context, um, it, it starts connecting, making sense. 
Um, so 61, of uh, Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, The Spirit of the Lord of God is upon me, because the Lord has appointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and, and the opening of the prison uh, to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, um, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be, uh, may be called uh, oaks of righteousness, the plants of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Now that's a, a, an amazing scripture to think about. That's what Christ came to do for us. Um, and so one would look at that, and it's in the Old Testament, and you would say, well, why, why would you say that that is about Christ? I mean, it doesn't specifically say Christ. It could be the prophet Isaiah saying that and, and talking about that, those people in that time. Well, that's, that's a good way of thinking. Um, we always have to be careful in the way we interpret and the way we, we look at things in context. But we have evidence of this. You look in the New Testament, uh, Luke four seventeen through 19, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him, talking about Jesus. He unrolled the scroll, and he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has appointed me uh, uh, to proclaim the good news of the poor. He has sent me um, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to, and recovering the sight to the blind, to set free, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord, uh, of the Lord's favor. Now, the interesting part right there is that in verse 20, and he rolled up the scroll and he gave it back to the attendant and he sat down and the eyes of the synagogue were fixed upon him. So now there's another part where uh, in another part of the, uh, uh, of the gospels where he says, and this has been fulfilled. And you can imagine the, the ruckus that took place. Um, on that day. Um, you can also look at Acts 10.38 as well um, in, in regards to that. Um, so he will propose a new covenant. So there's, um, we, we always talk about, you know, the, the old covenant with the, the people of God uh, and a new covenant with the people of God, the church. The, and so um, we find this uh, reference in um, Jeremiah 31, and then 31 through 34, and it says this, Behold, the, day, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Now I like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of, e of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, declares the Lord, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord, I will put my law within them and I will write and write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and his and each his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least to the, of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So this is something that this is a big debate. You have dispensationalism that, that talks about um, historically um, throughout church history, Israel has been viewed as as a typology or type of 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 the church, and the church is the new Israel, so to speak. Um, and so you're seeing this um, in this context. So if you're looking at that and you have a dispensational view, you would look at that as just a reference uh, to Israel as a continuing. Um, uh, covenant to them. If you look at uh, Hebrews uh, 8 and 8 through 12, one second, um, and then you will see uh, he says, For he finds fault with them when he says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant I made with, my, with the, their fathers. Um, and so we're seeing that he's repeating this, um, th this, this verse that we just read. Um, I'm going to go a little bit ahead of that. And um, 
And if you look at from 5, chapter, verse 5, it says, uh, they serve a copy in a shadow of the heavenly things. So let me, I'll tell you what, let me go back a little bit further. I'm going to go back to 1. So, um, Hebrews 8, 1 through 12. We're not going to read what Jeremiah said because we already read that, but we'll, we'll just get to that point. So now the point uh, in what we're saying is this. We have such a high priest, Jesus, one who is seated on the right hand of, of the throne of the majesty of heaven, a minister in the holy places, in the true tent that, that the Lord set up, not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices. Thus, it is necessary for this priest also to have something to offer. Now, if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. They serve as a copy or shadow. That's also a type, typology, of the heavenly things. For when, when Moses was about to erect the tent, he was instructed by God, saying, See, that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown to you on the mountain. But as, as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old, as the covenant um, he m mediates is better, since it, it is enacted on better, better promises. For if the co first covenant had been faultless, there would, would have been no occasion to look for a second. And then it goes on to say, for he finds fault with them when he says, and then he goes into Jeremiah. So that's very interesting talking about the um, covenant. You can also find this in, in Matthew as well. Um, and it's uh, in 26, um, verse 27. And um, it says, he, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, uh, he gave it to them. And he said, drink. And now this is talking about this is the new covenant. Um, so it, this is also talking about Jesus as a stumbling block for some. We see this in Isaiah. Um, again, we're going back in Isaiah, and it's uh, 8, 14 through 15. And so if you look at that, it says, And he will become a sanctuary and a stone of offense and a rock of stumbling um, to both houses of Israel, a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many shall stumble on it, and they shall fall and be broken. and they shall be snared and taken. Um, and we see this in, um, excuse me. We see this in Romans 9.33. Um, for those of you that have not read Romans 9.33, um, please do so. Um, and because technology is being a little... Strange with me today. You have to give me one chance to get my Bible. All right. So it's always good to have the paper copy because you never know what's going to happen with technology. So with uh, we're going to read Romans nine thirty three. All right, so behold, I am laying uh, in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So we just see this that uh, here, and Paul is writing in Romans and confirming exactly what was uh, foretold in Isaiah. Um, so we're going to look at a few, few more verses here. Um, So we'll, we'll look at um, a light to the Gentiles. And in the Old Testament it says, And now the Lord says, He who has formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light a thing that you may that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back to preserve the preserves of Israel. I might, I might, 
uh, I will might, <laughs> I don't know where this uh, translation, that I uh, may light be a light for the nations and that my salvation may reach the end of the earth. Um, New Testament, Acts 13, 47, 48. For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. And when the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing, glorifying the Lord, um, as many were appointed to eternal uh, life believed. That's a, that's a profound verse right there, because you're seeing now that salvation is not just for the Jews, not just for Israel, the nation, it's for the world. That's where you see John 3.16. Uh, and then you see God's election, um, where it says, and Gentiles rejoice. And uh, when they glorify God, when they heard the word of the Lord, and as many were appointed, uh, elected by God, that they, they uh, believed um, and, had on eternal, and had an eternal life. Eternal life, to, and pointed to eternal life, they believed. So it's, a, it's just a beautiful verse. Um, so we're going to close with that. Um, there's a lot more verses, um, but this is just to give you some snapshots of what um, we see being fulfilled in the Old Testament through Christ. Again, what Augustine said one time it was the Old, the New Testament is, re, is, is concealed in the Old Testament. Um, the, new, the Old Testament is revealed in the New Testament. And so just take your time to look at the Old Testament through the proper context, proper interpretation or hermeneutics is that science of interpretation and and take the time to really see christ throughout the scriptures um and and uh you'll just be amazed and and just in awe um of what god is trying to tell you uh through the scriptures um so we're going to continue this um next next section um, we're going to be talking a little bit more about what we just talked about with the ministry. And then we're going to talk about prophecies that were fulfilled in the Old Testament, uh, in the New Testament, um, that were spoken in the Old Testament and, and um, fulfilled in the New Testament uh, regarding the, the death and resurrection of, of Jesus. Um, and then we're going to be getting into some sessions after this. They're going to be shorter sessions, about 15 minutes long, and focusing on. Um, a specific topic, maybe a specific question, responding to that with um, with biblical um, teaching, um, and it'll be about 15 minutes long. So that is something we're going to be doing in the near future. Uh, keep us in prayer as we're doing this. Um, we do this to just share what we're learning, um, to educate others. Theology is so important, um, and uh, you, it's the study of God, um, and so. Let's, um, let's all begin to really uh, study, and out of that should produce worship and, um, and hum humility in all of us. For those of you that may not know Christ, we pray that, you will, um, that God will, um, will change your heart and will um, bring you to salvation. Um, we are all sinners, um, and we, were, we are all were, have been, we're, when we're born, we're dead in our sins. We're incapable of, of, um, of being saved on our own, nothing about our works, nothing that we can do. Um, we don't even want to uh, seek God. We might want to seek the benefits of God, but not God. Um, and so we, um, we, because we are dead in our, those sins, we're a slave to that. And so the work of God is that he, he regenerates our heart. He gives us a new heart, changes our heart of stone into a heart of flesh, and that produces faith. And that faith, then you start seeing your sin through the eyes of God, and you start hating your sin. And that leads to repentance, which means you turn away from your sin. So you place your faith in Christ 100%, abandoning all else, abandoning the world, and putting your faith in Christ. And when that happens, uh, God imputes his righteousness upon you. That means that the judge declares you righteous. Um, you were once an enemy of God. You were once condemned to death, but now you have been given not your own righteousness because you don't have it. We don't have it. None of us do. But the righteousness we have now in Christ is from Christ. And, um, and so when God looks at us, he no longer looks as a, at us as a sinner, but as his child. He's adopted us in, as his child, and he's uh, sealed us with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, indwelling within us to preserve us, 
to and to sanctify us as we um, go through this uh, this this walk with Christ in this world until that day when we are glorified with Him in heaven, where we are liberated from sin. And so this is the work that Christ did for us on the cross. He bore the wrath that we deserved um, so that we can be reconciled to God. And he uh, was our substitute. And so um, if you uh, don't know Christ, we, we plead with you today to put your faith in Christ, repent of your sins and believe today. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Um, you can email us. You can send us messages through Facebook. Um, you can go to our website, hopemovement.com, and send us messages as well. Um, and uh, try to find a good Bible-believing church um, because you need that, um, that edification from other believers who are going through the same struggles uh, as we take up our cross and follow Christ. So I hope that you are blessed and have a wonderful day, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. God bless.